Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated this morning. God bless you. Dallas, you did a great job. Great job. And Dallas doing a great job. Brendan doing a great job. Johnny. We're missing our bass player this morning. Glad to have Rach and the crew and Jeremiah and the crew in service this morning. I'm so glad to get them home sometime. Praise God. Amen. They're off working and Brother Whitmire's loaning the Ray crew, I guess, to us this morning. Amen. We're missing Robert, though. Praise God. Amen. I guess we're going to let our young people be dismissed this morning. Praise God. Pray for Pastor John. He's been a very busy young fellow lately. Praise God. He is preaching out this morning and he preached out Wednesday <laughs> amen he's a in demand young man praise God we need him here as well but I understand in fact we're missing the Maldonados uh, this morning because they're off I guess you might call it I, being as it's a holiday weekend they're off taking the opportunity to spend time as a family going down to the coast so pray for them that the Lord will give them a safe trip uh, home whenever they decide to come home uh, people need to get away every once in a while I'm not against that amen praise God my wife likes to do all that kind of stuff, but I'm not much at it. I'm kind of a homebody. Nothing wrong with it, you know, as long as you're faithful, you know, overall. Amen. I don't believe there's anything wrong with getting away now and again. Amen. Amen. I think it's good for you. Good for your family. Do stuff with your family. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Did y'all ever read that scripture that says, Wives, let your husband go fishing sometime? <laughs> and it didn't say that, does it? <laughs> I must have read that in Field and Stream or something. Magazine. No, I didn't. Praise God. But it's good to get away. And, uh, but pray for them. That they'll have a safe trip. Amen. Again, you know, I've already mentioned police officers today as, as well as the military and stuff. But uh, keep, please keep the law enforcement, amen, in your prayers. Amen. It may be you that they're being sent to protect next. And they got families. They got families. I'll tell you one thing, God can use anything, but most of the time to do things in our lives, whether it's to bless us or to protect us, he uses people. He does. They are instruments. He uses parents to raise kids. He uses preachers to preach his word. Amen. And he uses people. Amen. And so pray for them. Again, it's not a proof of somebody's salvation. Amen. Whether they are involved in any of those places it does not mean that they're saved because it calls them the ministers of God. But it does mean that God has let those things be you know, for the welfare of the overall good. Amen. Praise God. Teaches us to be obedient to them. <clears throat> and uh, I know that there, there's people 
that don't believe you have to obey the authorities because they're a Christian and they belong to Christ. But I'm, I'm afraid they need to read the scriptures a little bit because the scriptures teaches us that. That with good works we will put to silence the foolishness of ignorant men. We're so, we should be the best people in the land. We should be. And uh, it's only when they go against our Lord that we have to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going that route. You know, that's when we obey God rather than men. And <clears throat> the rest of the time we are obeying God whenever we do lawful things. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Even whenever I have a president or in the, in the country that I'm living in that I did not vote for or believe in, in the, what they stand for, that doesn't stop me from praying for them. I didn't say I'd pray for any unlawful, ungodly deeds they promote, but I can still pray for their salvation, and I can pray that, they, that their hearts will be to where the Christians may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I can pray for that. The Bible says that's good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Amen. He'd have all men to be saved. Amen. He wanted Barack Obama saved. He wants Donald Trump saved. You know? And uh, I'm very impressed when I read about Daniel. He was in the midst of a heathen king. And yet, more than one heathen king. And yet he found favor with them. And he really did. He didn't do the evil things that they did, but he was even promoted in the kingdom. And uh, sounds like Nebuchadnezzar uh, got somewhat converted to a certain degree. I don't know how far he actually went, but his grandson or son or grandson didn't and <laughs> didn't learn from it. Uh, Cyrus's name was put in the Bible before he ever existed. So God has his hand. He sets up who he will, and he puts down who he will. And uh, we just need to be lights in a dark place. Amen. Praise God. Well, <clears throat> I wanted to mention a little bit about Memorial Day because I believe it's very important, but that's not necessarily what I'm going to preach about this morning. Praise God. We're going to look in Romans, the same chapter uh, that we read about the powers that be. But in Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14, praise God. Amen. Josie's here. Amen. Praise God. Paul writing to the Christians at Rome, he says, and that knowing the time, everybody say, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Everybody say the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness... And let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly. Everybody say, as in the day. day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering, which references basically sleeping around. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. God, would you help me minister to your people today? Let something be said that's going to help us walk with you. 
In the name of Jesus, I ask for grace. Amen. And teach and minister in this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I hope I can dig out the meat of what I want to say in these verses of Scripture. Amen. If you'll notice, he talks about in verse 11, awaking. Awaking. Coming awake. And then he mentions the night. The night is far spent. Amen. In other words, night time's over. And the day's at hand. The day's, the sun's coming up. That's the picture that I, uh, that I read there. I, I know he's referencing spiritual things when he says that, but he uses the literal aspect of things. Amen. To tell us, you know, wake up out of the sleep. The night is far spent. It's, it's passing. The day is at hand. To be at hand means it's right here. It's right. It's time. The day is at hand. And so he says, cast off the works of darkness. Most people probably sleep in some kind of a, a, dar- a garment in the darkness in the nighttime. And he's telling you to put off that old garment. Amen? And let us put on, put off the old garment of darkness, right? That you slept in. That's the picture that's depicted here. Cast off the works of darkness. Put on the armor of light. And then he mentions some things. Walking honestly as in the day. With the garments you're going to wear in the daytime, right? Amen. Not in rioting and drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, not in strife and envying, ill will, basically, ill, bad things. And it, the, the reference is that those things are the garment of the night, basically. But we got to put off, amen, amen, the works of darkness. And then put on that armor of light, the clothing for the day. The day is at hand. The night is far spent. And uh, there's some, I believe, and I've mentioned this, don't mean to be repetitious, but I believe there's some references in the scripture that help us to have through things that are likenesses, patterns, maybe you might say, you can look at the creation, amen, and get somewhat of a concept of what Paul is telling the Christians at Rome, amen. The Bible says in Genesis 1.16, when God made the worlds and stuff, the in the beginning things, you know, the first day, second day, third day, on the fourth day, it says, and God made two great lights, Everybody say, two great lights. What was the greater light for? The greater light was to rule the day. Amen. Who knows what that greater light is? That's the sun, isn't it? I'm talking about in the literal sense. It's the sun, isn't it? We'll get to that in a little bit. Praise God. The greater light, God made the sun, and he made it to rule the day. And the lesser light, who knows what that light is? The moon, right? The moon. He made the the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Amen. So he had two great lights. And this picture is, is that by this literal illustration, we can get kind of somewhat of an ideal, amen, of the gospel of Jesus and the Mosaic law. Now, and what I'll show you is, amen, the, the, the moon that you see, sometimes you can go out on a moonlight night, and it's just nearly like daytime. I think it's very pretty during those times. I don't know why. Maybe you're like this too. I've told my mother about it before, but when there's a real bright moonlight night when the sky's clear, there's no clouds, and, and it's just one of those, looks like the moon is right there at your back door, you know, when you look out. You know, it's so bright, 
You don't even need a flashlight. Amen. But I, during those nights, for some reason, I can't sleep very good. I, I know it, the, the moon has some bearing on the, on the tides and the gravity and all of that kind of stuff, from what I understand, at least. I'm not uh, real educated on all of that, just what I've heard. Amen. And uh, the, 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 uh, the moon is very bright sometimes. It's not that it's not uh, bright at other times. It's sometimes the light that's shining on it gets blocked, and that's where we get the different uh, phases of the moon. I mean, it's not that it's gotten smaller. In fact, if you ever look at it when it's like on a, uh, you know, uh, the, what do they call it, a quarter moon or something like that, if you really look, you can still see the outline of the moon. Amen. It's there. It's just that the light's shining or being blocked, actually, from what I understand. And it's not completely exposed to the light from the sun. The sun, that moon actually has no light itself. The light that it has comes from the sun. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 6.23, the commandment, and at this time when it was given, the commandment was the law, right? Amen. Praise God. The commandment is a lamp. It's like a lamp. Amen. Praise God. Thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. It shows me where I'm at and it shows me where to go. Amen. Praise God. And so he says, Thou, the, word, the commandment is a lamp. And the law is a light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 19 that the law, referencing the Mosaic law, amen, where he got the Ten Commandments and he got all the other uh, parts of that, he got the tabernacle plan and all that went with that and all the instructions in Leviticus and all of those things. Amen. Praise God. The clean animals, the unclean animals, the things that, you know, <clears throat> of the law that were given. Amen. The law was a light. Amen. It was a lamp. Amen. It was a light. Amen. But the Bible says in Galatians 3.19 that the law... It was added because of transgressions. Tell. Everybody say tell. Everybody say until. That's what that means, tell. Amen. Don't mean go out and till your ground. It means until. The law was added from, Abra from Abraham. Amen. Praise God. Abraham didn't have the law. Right? Come on. It was his descendant Moses that God gave the law to. Amen? Praise God. And when Moses came on the scene, amen, the law was added between the time of Abraham and the time of Christ. There was a reason God put the law there. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And that seed, according to Galatians 3.16, three verses up, thy seed, which is Christ. Christ was the seed, amen, that was being waited for to come. And between Abraham and that seed coming, amen, people would have been very lawless people. Amen. All kinds of things would be going on. All kinds of corrupt things. Amen. Praise God. All kinds of things that would grieve the Spirit of God. So the law, the Lord added the law, amen, during that time between Abraham and Christ coming. Amen. Because he was added because of transgressions. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I look at the law 
as the lesser light. Amen. Though it was a great and wonderful, powerful law. It's much like if you look at the moon. Amen. Praise God. It was placed during there. The moon is in existence to cover the time of night. The darkness. And night depicts the time of sin. It depicts the time where people go out and do all kinds of mischievous and evil deeds. Amen? God placed the law uh, because of transgression. It was a light in a dark world. Amen. Praise God. It's much like the moon. Praise God. And whenever Jesus came, He fulfilled the law, the Bible says. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 5, <clears throat> it says, Now the end, the word end means the goal. There was a goal. Amen? Praise The end of the commandment, the goal of the commandment, Amen. Praise God. The Bible also teaches us that the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, right? Come on, it was taking us somewhere. It was supposed to take us somewhere. It's to bring us to Christ. Amen. And here we have the end or the goal of the commandment is charity, which is love. Out of a pure heart, not a corrupted person. It's not somebody that's sweet and full of corruption. But the goal of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience. Amen. Our conscience is cleared by the blood of Jesus, isn't it? And by faith and of faith unfeigned. That's the goal. Not having a fake form of Christianity, but having real, genuine Christianity. Amen. Really living for God. That's our goal. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be headed towards. Amen. Then he says this, from which some having swerved, you ever swerved from something in the road? It can cause you to, uh, it can cause you to kill yourself. It can cause you to die. Amen. It can cause horrible wrecks. Some people have swerved from the end of the commandment. Amen. They've swerved having turned aside into vain janglings. Amen. Praise God. A lot of people have a lot of beliefs that don't, they don't coincide with what the Bible is actually teaching. Amen. I want to be real, don't you? I want to have, amen, the real faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said they've turned aside into vain janglings. This is their problem right here. These people that Paul was addressing to Timothy, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Then Paul brings out, but we know, and I know, and you know, I hope, that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. It filled a time where there was lawlessness. Amen. Praise God. But we know, as verse 9 says, knowing this, that the law <clears throat> is not made for a righteous man. Amen. It's but for the lawless for the disobedient, for the ungodly, for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. That's what the law was made for. It was made for lawlessness. Amen. Praise God. But a person that is not lawless in the sight of God, amen, doesn't have to worry about the law. Amen. When we're children of the day, when we're walking in the light of the gospel of Christ, we are not violators of law. Oh, praise God. It wasn't made for righteous men. It wasn't made for righteous for uh, righteous women. It was made for the lawless and for the disobedient. Amen. 
Can I tell you, Christians are not under the law. That does not mean that they're lawless people. Come on, we're very obedient. Amen. In fact, what we are involved in today is much like uh, as the uh, moon received its light from the sun. Amen. What we are involved in today is the light that comes from the sun, as it were. Praise God. Amen. The law wouldn't have what it had unless it had what we have. Amen. Praise God. It was the light from the sun that shone upon the moon that gave light in the darkness. Amen. But the thing about it is, when you are in the day, you are in something that is so much more bright. Oh, praise God. We're not in something that brings us in the darkness. We're in something that shines and illuminates a greater light for the benefit of all. Amen. Praise God. And we are clothed. We are not clothed with the garment of darkness, but we are clothed with the garment of light and righteousness and truth. Amen. Praise God. You see, that, that lesser light, it was made to shine on those that lived in darkness. Amen. In fact, if you live a life of darkness, you are under the law. Did you know that? If you live a life of darkness, you are living under the law. Amen. Praise God. The death penalty was under the law. Did you know that? Yes. You hear a lot of Christians say, well, I don't believe in thou shalt not kill. I mean, I believe in thou shalt not kill. So the death penalty, you know, shouldn't be operative. You can say what you will or contend with that if you will. But the truth of the matter is, when people do deeds, actions that come forth for them, <clears throat> amen, that are of darkness, they brought themselves under the law. Amen. But a righteous person doesn't have to worry about that. Because they're not going around killing people. Or they're not going around doing actions and deeds that bring them under the law. Amen. They're children of the light. They're children of the day. Amen. Praise God. So Paul told the Christians at Rome. He said the darkness is past. The night is far spent. Amen. They had come into the time where the law, amen, was being fulfilled. Jesus said, don't think I've come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Amen. Praise God. The night is past. The time where people didn't understand <clears throat> all the things that we understand today about the Lord. Amen. Oh, come on. We're in a bright light. We are in a, the children of the day. We're in a time where we're not in obscure darkness and we only see partial things of light. The light has come. We have become involved in the daytime. Amen? The night is far spent. It's time to get rid of the, the deeds of darkness. It's time to quit walking in darkness. Amen? Praise God. We need to cast off Amen, the garment of darkness and robe ourselves, amen, with the garment of light. Amen. Come on, we need to, the light is shining bright. We're knowledgeable of it. We know about it. We've encountered him, amen. <coughs> We've encountered him. We know what it is to be children of the light. Amen. We've got to put away all of those things of dishonesty, rioting, drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, strife, and envy. And it's time to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's time to quit making provisions for our flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And it's time to arm ourselves with the armor of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. People didn't... At one time, know what we know today. John, in his epistle, 1 John 2 and 8, he said, the darkness is past where you just had the moon, where you just had the law, and you didn't see the full scope of things. Amen. The darkness is past, and the true light now 
shineth. Amen. Jesus is referenced in Malachi 4 2 as being the S U N of righteousness. Uh, he is the S O N Son of God, but He is in type uh, the greater light that rules the children of the day. Amen. I want to be a child of the day, I don't want to be a child of the night. I don't want to be under the law, amen, in the darkness where uh, it has, uh, listen to me, condemnation upon my life, amen. But I want to walk in the light as he is in the light that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse me from all unrighteousness, amen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I want to be a child of the light. Amen. But unto you that fear my name, the Lord says, Malachi 4.2. Shall the sun, S-U-N, we don't worship the literal sun. This is depicting Jesus Christ though. That he would, the son of righteousness uh, would arise with healing in his wings. Amen. Praise God. That's why Paul said the darkness is past. The day is at hand. Walk as children of the light. Come on, the day is at hand. We know about it. We're aware of it. We got the gospel. We know the truth. We just need to walk in it. We need to walk in it. Amen. We're not like so many of the past that didn't see the full picture. We see the full picture. Amen. In reference to the second coming of Jesus, Paul tells the Thessalonians this, Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, the second coming of Jesus, right? The day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. Amen. The things that's coming upon this world, they're going to look like they fixing things, folks. It's going to look like they're going to be saying peace and safety. We got it figured out now. They're going to have their man, the Antichrist. They're going to have him. They're going to think this man's going to fix our problems. But they don't realize it. They're fixing to face some horrible things. Horrible things. Because you know what? Jesus is the only true light. And Jesus is the only answer. And we know about Jesus. But the Bible says because they receive not the love of the truth. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Because men love darkness rather than light. Amen. Right. A day is going to come upon this world. And they're going to say peace and safety. We got it figured out. But sudden destruction is going to come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. There's only one true light, one way to fix your life, and it is Jesus. Amen. There's not another way. He's the light of the world. Amen. Amen. But because men, amen, love it unrighteousness the Bible says God will send them strong delusion amen I want to love the truth I want to love righteousness I want to love godliness I want to be a child of the light I don't want to be robed with a garment of darkness I want to be robed with the garment of righteousness amen I want to be robed with the whole armor of God amen I want to live in this dark world, as a child of light. Amen. Amen. I know the world's still dark. But for the Christians, they're in the day. They're, they're in the day. They're people of the day. They're people of the light. Not partial light. Not like the moon. Amen. But as in the full sun. Amen. Which we have in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Paul went on to say, But you, brethren... Christians are not in darkness that that day, the second coming of Jesus, that that day should overtake you as a thief. It'll overtake the world as a thief, but Christians, 
<clears throat> that are in the light will be awake and watching. Amen. I'm awake. Are you awake? Are you watching? Amen. For the second coming of Jesus. Amen. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know the time. I don't know the season. All I know is going to happen. Amen. i got to stay in the light. You're all the children of the light. And the children of the day. Oh, praise God. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. When people are asleep, they're not conscious about what's going on. Come on. We need to stay out in the daylight. Praise God. Spiritually speaking, we need to stay in the light. We don't need to be dozed in the darkness. We need to be children of the light. But let us watch and be sober. He's talking about sober-minded. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us. Amen. The us is the people that are of the day. Amen. The children of the day. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, to be, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Whether we wake or sleep, whether we're walking the earth when he comes again, or we've been put in a grave. Come on. Whichever the case, we should live together with him. And it says, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And that's what I'm doing to you today. Amen. I'm trying to comfort your heart. I'm trying to encourage you and provoke you to good works. Don't be a child of the darkness. Amen. Cast off the works of darkness. Amen. Take off that old sleeping garment and become robed with the, the garment of light. Amen. Amen. We're children of the day. We're no longer of the dark. We're no longer in the dark on who God is. Amen. We know more than anybody has ever known about God in the day and the hour that we live. We know what God is like. We know who God is. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says in uh, the book of Acts that God once winked at this ignorance. Amen. But now commands all men everywhere to repent. The ignorance that he was talking about that God once winked at was people worshiping idols. You read it in its old context. Paul went to Athens and there they had all kinds of statues and things. They even had one built to the unknown God of whom Paul used as a platform basically to preach Amen to them that the God that they ignorantly worship, I'm going to tell you who he is. Amen. And he said God once winked at this ignorance that you're doing, but now he commands all men everywhere to, to repent. Make an about face and turn to the one true and living God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You see, we're not in the dark anymore. We know what God is like. We know who He is. Amen. We have the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Amen. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way. He just got through talking about going to heaven. He just got through talking about, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And they didn't understand what he's talking about. So he said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to get there. Come on, he's the truth of what life is all about. When you know Jesus, you know all you need to know about God. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and he's the life. He goes on to say, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him. In other words, every action that Jesus displayed was a first-hand look at the actions of God. Amen. The Bible says he went about doing good to all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. 
He went around reaching people that was less fortunate. He went around helping people that was in binds. He went around healing the brokenhearted. Amen. Delivering the captives. Amen. You've seen God on display right before your eyes when you saw Jesus. Amen. You not only saw his actions and you know what his spirit is like, you also saw the man, Christ Jesus, which was the image of the invisible God. Amen? Amen. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Oh, come on, we're not in the dark. The daylight is shining. Come on, the light's shining. Amen. Amen. But so many people are like Philip. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And it suffieth us. In other words, it satisfies. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and in the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Everybody say, dwelleth in him. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. We are not in the dark of knowing what God is like. Read about Jesus, amen, and you'll know firsthand what God is like and what He wants you to be like. Amen. The darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. Colossians 2, 9 says, For in Him, in Jesus, in the man Christ Jesus, amen, in Him dwelleth. The word dwelleth means permanently housed. Amen. Jesus the man is the headquarters of the deity that created the universe. He is the deity. Amen. The spirit that was in him is the God that made the universe. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. We know what God is like. Come on, we know what our creator is like. Follow him. (coughs) Follow him. Amen, we know. We know, we know. Praise God. For in him dwelleth, is permanently housed. All, not just a part of God. He was more than a spirit-filled man. I got his spirit in my life. But I don't have the fullness of deity in me. Amen. Praise God. He lives in my life. He's joined in my spirit. And we we became one as a marriage unit is one. Amen. But it's not so with Jesus. Jesus did not just have the earnest of his inheritance. Amen. Jesus was the headquarters, is the headquarters of the almighty God. The only God that there is inhabits that human manifestation. Amen. Amen. Come on, you're complete in him. (laughs) Praise God. And it's permanently housed in that body. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. The word Godhead means deity. Bodily, in a bodily form. Amen. It says in Colossians 1.19, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Amen. Praise God. John chapter 1 verse number 4 says, In him, in Jesus, in him, in the word, in him was life. In him was, everybody say, in him was life. There was something in Jesus. There was something inside of that man, Jesus. There was a life inside of him. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. When you have the life of Jesus, you have the light of men. Amen. The sun brings forth light. And that's the true light. And when we have Christ, we have the light of the world. And we have that light inside of our lives. Amen. It goes so far to say in Colossians 3 and 4, it says, For for you are dead and your life, your previous life, your sinful life, right? 
is hid in Christ, with, in, in, with Christ in God. When Christ, then we'll listen to what it says. When Christ, who is our life, He is our life. He's not talking about our human life. He's talking about the life He's put inside of us. Who is our life. He's our ticket out of here. Come on, He's our way to be saved. If we have Him inside of us, in Him was life, and that life was the light of men. And when I get that inside of me, I have eternal life living inside of me because I have Christ in me. Amen? Amen. Come on. When Christ who is our life shall appear, he's coming again, folks, then shall you also appear with him in glory if that spirit is on the inside of you. Amen. Praise God. You're going to appear with him in glory. If that which was in Jesus is inside of you, you're going to appear with him in glory. We need to be children of the day in his light and there's no darkness at all. We need that life that was in him inside of us. We've got to be surrendered to it. We've got to be given to it. Amen. He goes on a little clearer in Romans 8 and 10. It says, and if Christ be in you. Everybody say, if Christ be in you. The body is dead. The body of sin is what he's talking about. The body of sin is dead. You've got to die out to it. That's why Jesus said, except you, uh, you know, take up your cross and follow him. You can't, if you don't deny yourself, amen, you can't be his disciple. Amen. He's not going to share the tabernacle with you. You got to get out of the way and got to get him inside. That life that was in Jesus has got to be inside of us. Amen. Come on, anything that's not of Jesus needs to go from my life. Get it out. Get rid of it. Cast it off. It's the works of darkness. We got to be in the light. We got to be the children of the day. We got to have his life inside of us. Ruling and reigning. Amen. The devil's always trying to get something else inside of us. He is. He'll tempt you with all kinds of things. To get that life of Christ out of you and put something in its place. He'll let you be religious. He'll let you go to church. He'll let you do all kinds of things as long as you don't have that life that was in Jesus living and ruling and reigning in you. Because you're free from Him. Amen. If you Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit capital S, that Holy Ghost we got when we prayed through, that Holy Ghost we got, that Holy Ghost that Jesus sent to us, the comforter when it came inside of us. But the Spirit is life. It is life. It is your life. Christ is our life. Amen. And Christ is that Holy Spirit inside of us. It's, it's life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit, capital S, Holy Ghost, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus the man from the dead, if that spirit dwells inside of you, come on, if it's really there, come on, he that raised up the, the body of Jesus from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. There's going to be a change in your life. There's going to, come on, you're not going to be the old dark person that you used to be. And I'm not talking about skin tone. I'm talking about the deeds, the actions of the dark side. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Y'all are quiet. <laughs> He's going to quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, I just got through reading to you. If when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you appear with Him in glory. There's an aspect of that. That's what's going to take you out of here. But it, I believe in this context... In Romans, it's talking about it's going to change the way you live. It is going to change your behavior. It's going to change. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to bring you, amen, amen, 
to being a different creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Oh, we got to have that life inside of us. Amen. The mystery among the Gentiles, according to Colossians 1 and 27, was Christ in you, that spirit in you, the hope of glory. We're not in darkness anymore. I said the day is at hand. Come on, the day is shining bright. We have knowledge about it. We're not in the dark about it. We have the Bible to read. We can hear about Jesus. We can read about Jesus. We have Jesus preached to us. We know what was in Him. And we are the ones that's got to let what was in Him be inside of us. We've got to cast off those things of darkness. And we've got to put on the armor of righteousness, the armor of light. John 9, 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the day is at hand. Come on. The night's far spent, the day is at hand. He said, I got to work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. There's a dark hour coming on this earth, folks. I said, there's a dark hour. That's that time when they say peace and safety and sudden destruction coming. When the king or the prince of darkness comes. But right now we have Jesus and we have the knowledge of Jesus. And we know what he's like. Amen. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And he's still here by his spirit. I said he's still here by the Holy Ghost. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. John 8, 12, and I'll quit. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We have, when we have Jesus in the form of the Holy Ghost, we have the light, amen, of life dwelling inside of us Christ is our life and the thing we need to concentrate on is keeping that spirit that was in Jesus inside of our lives amen he hasn't come to leave you hear me I said he hasn't come to leave he's there the question is is where are we at where are we at? Amen. He didn't fill us with the Holy Ghost to leave us. He came into our lives to bring light and life into our world, into our lives. Amen. Praise God. And the world's so full of all kinds of things. And the devil's seem like he's working overtime to try to bring things into people's lives that'll, that'll snuff out, amen, that light. To dim it down. Dim it down. Amen. He wants you to have a real stat switch, spiritually speaking, on your life. Amen. That he can just turn you down a little bit. He don't want you going up. See that light up there? This is a switch. He wants to bring things into your life, amen, and into my life that turns your light down. But Jesus says, turn it all the way up. Amen. Let it be bright. I know you'll be different. I know you won't be like everybody around you, but turn it up so they can see. Turn it up so they can see. Don't live to fit in. Live to please God. God 
doesn't have to have you, but he wants you. God doesn't have to have you, but you might say he does need you. Amen. He needs you to be a tool he can use to shine wherever you go. Somebody said it last night. I don't remember who which one it was. Brother Dingman, I think, at Men's Fellowship. We should tell people what we are and who we are. But he said, we should not even have to tell people. There should be something about us that they ought to know that we're different. They ought to know that we're different. The Bible says when they persecuted the apostles, it says, and they perceived that they had been with Jesus. Oh, let it be said about us. I perceive that you have been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, he's done rubbed off on you. He's done rubbed off on you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm not going to keep you. Just stand. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I told the men last night, probably an unfortunate thing for them, but I was the one that John asked to do the speaking last night. But I tried to encourage them to seek the Lord. And I asked them the question, you know, do you, are you seeking God? I'm not saying that as condemnation. I'm not, con I don't, I'm not trying to condemn, no. Just, just to ask you a question. Are you seeking God? You don't have everything you need. Neither do I. I still got more to learn. I got higher places to go. <clears throat> maybe, 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 maybe you may look at me and say, well, you're higher up on the ladder than I am. Well, in your eyes that might be so. But if you're young in the Lord, you may be farther up the ladder than I am. And it may look like you're not that high. God looks at it in a different way than we do. The thing about it is, I've been in this since 1979. Listen to me. I should be pretty far along. I should be. I was a baby when I started this. Not a literal baby, but spiritually I was a baby. And there's times I got choked on trying to eat too strong a meat. <laughs> I was one of the kind of babies that you put it in front of me, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> you know? I, you can tell that by my... Amen. I'm not talking about eating false doctrine. I'm talking about truth. But not everybody's the same. And you know what? I realize that now. For many years, I grew very frustrated at people because I thought they should be farther along. But the truth of the matter is, just like children, people grow different. Pe and you can try to give somebody too strong a stuff before it's time and damage them. I don't want to damage nobody. I want everybody, even I've, no, I've grown to know as pastor, sometimes it takes years to get a little ways with folks. Some people just go, but not everybody's like that. And that's why Jesus has pastors. It is. Amen. And some of us have made plenty of mistakes in our growth process to be able to have compassion on some of those that are struggling sometimes. Amen. Let's help one another. Let's help one another to make it. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Let's be children of the light. Let's be children of the day. Amen. Let's be long-suffering. Let's be kind. Amen. You'll get a lot farther along with people being kind. Right? Gentle. Fruit of the Spirit. 
Stay in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Whatever Jesus was like, be like that. Amen? That's your goal. Charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and faith unfeigned. It's not fake. I'm being real with Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I do once again, I've said it, I don't mean to be repetition, but Brother Dwayne, thank you so much for that food you fixed us last night. Even the ladies got in on it. Amen. Some of them. Amen. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> yeah, I ate some of that too. Praise God. Brother Dingman, dismiss us in a word of prayer, please. Yes, Lord.